So let's continue our carotid meshing. So I'll start by some CFD. Then I'm going to open the Aegis project. And I have found a few problems with Aegis files and meshing, and I'm going to show you what those are and how we can overcome these problems. So we, so we now have the geometry as we created the, uh, it last time. And in order to create the mesh, we are going to use the meshing tab here. We have global mesh setup, part mesh setup, i.e. the different surfaces that we defined last time, the sinus, the apex, the outlets, and the inlet. Put those in different parts, if you remember. So we will see these different parts here, and we can have specific parameters for those. Um, we have surface mesh setup and other, and then ultimately the compute mesh. So the surface mesh setup we won't use in this form. We are going to use a simpler approach. Um, and we'll go through the global setup and then mesh the different things. Um, we have global mesh parameters where we set the mesh sizes. One of the important aspects of meshing with ISOM is we can easily scale the whole mesh. So every length that we use here, while it will be in, at first identified in meters, so we will set 0 0.001 for one millimeter, but we can then use this scaling factor here to simply scale the mesh down or up in size or in length scale on each cell. So if we change that scale factor from one to two, each mesh length will be multiplied by two and the mesh will be correspondingly coarser. Um, since we have a three-dimensional mesh that can get out of hand quite quickly. So if I change the scale factor from one to 0.5, each cell will be 50% lengthwise um, and then before, compared to before. But since we have a three-dimensional mesh, the mesh size will not increase by a factor of two, but it will increase by a factor of two to the power of three because each of the three dimensions will be halved in size. So it's easy to get massively out of hand with these factors, so be careful with those. But we're going to use those to create meshes for a mesh uh, convergence study, where we create a base mesh and then scale it down and scale it up. We have a coarser mesh and a finer mesh, and we're going to talk about how can we do a mesh convergence study in another video. So we leave this scale factor at one for the time being. Um, the global element size, I need to check what the dimension of my mesh is. I assume it is created in meter and it says down here that the system is working in meters. But let's double check that by just double checking one of the surface areas. Let's check this one. Yes, surface face area is 0 0.00031. Since I know that this is about four to five millimeters diameter, um, or should be about that, yeah then that mesh will be in meters and this is square meters and not square millimeters. So if I want, for example, a mesh size, maximum element size on my meshes of one millimeter, I would set that to 0 0.001. Um, I can enable curvature and proximity based refinement, which is very often a good idea. And I usually set that to about a fifth or a fourth of the main element size. So that will refine based on curvature. And this uh, and, and feature size. We don't have that many features here, but it will refine the mesh accordingly. 
So that is the meshing setup for the global mesh. I can set shell meshing parameters, which I will use to mesh the surfaces. So we want to create a tetrahedral mesh. So I will set that to triangles. Um, the rest I leave as standard. The volume meshing parameters I set to tetra. The mesh method octree is a very robust mesh method and if everything else fails you can use that. The drawback of octree is that it will jump in mesh size so it will half the mesh size in one step and that can lead to quite harsh uh, transitions in mesh sizing and to problems with uh, the uh, code. So it's, it's, it can be a very good mesh if you don't have jumps in mesh size or if you don't have too many different mesh sizes but usually the Delaunay or the advancing front mesher will give us a better mesh. So I typically use the Delaunay mesher and one of the important factors that we're going to look into later is the spacing scaling factor which in this in the Delaunay measure tells us how quick are the cells going to grow from one cell to the next. So if you have different cell sizes, you can smoothly transition between the two and you can control that using the spacing factor. So having set that to the Delaunay method, um, I'm going to apply this. So let's make sure that I have applied this as well. I haven't applied this, you see. So I have applied all of these three. The prism mesh is used to grow cell layers from the surface in order to create a boundary layer. I leave these for the uh, with the defaults for the time being, and we're going to address refinements and, and, and adjustments on that later on. One thing I need to do if I want to have a prism mesh is I need to select which surfaces will get prism layers and I do that in the part mesh setup. This setup allows me more control over the whole process. It allows me to change the maximum size on a part by part or by surface patch by surface patch uh, level. So if I wanted for example, and we're going to do that later, have the sinus to be smaller uh, in, uh, in have smaller mesh size, then I can change that value here. Um, if I leave it at zero, it will change the default, if it will use the default values that I just entered in the global parameters. So the prisms, I, uh, the, the, the prisms will only want, uh, will only grow, have to be grown on the walls. So wall, sinus and apex are the walls where I want to grow a prism. So that I can accept and then apply. Before I grow the mesh, I need to do one thing with the geometry. I need to go to the repair geometry and use the build diagnostic topology. That will check that the topology is correct, that all the edges are in the right places, and it will also uh, give you the option to uh, close uh, it will identify gaps that you can then fix we shouldn't have any gaps in this or at least not massive gaps it will automatically close them so if i click apply you see it has merged 412 curves curves will be highlighted that it merged so it now merged all these surfaces together so that is now a watertight geometry that i can use for meshing so I now go back to the mesh and let's see what this meshing does for us. So let's see what this mesh will look like. So this created a mesh. It looks like a mesh. I switched the geometry off here. 
So this looks like a mesh. So not the best mesh in the world, but it is a mesh. So if I switch mesh path things on and switch the volumes on and the shells off, you see that the mesh is, you have the volume mesh. Sometimes the mesher cannot distinguish the inside from the outside and it will mesh you the outside. But typically if you have a border tight surface, it will create the mesh correctly. Let me show you what you can do if the meshing doesn't work that way. So let's switch the curves on and the mesh off. What you need to define in that case is another geometry uh, entity. What you need to define is a body. So basically it's not a body as in a volume, but it is the location or a location, a material point that you can set. The easiest way to do that is select two points on the screen. So let's use this point and that point. Click the middle button again, and you need to switch the bodies on so you see them here. So let's now check where that body is. That body is now on the inside. So if your meshing did fail, or sometimes it's a good idea to have that body in there anyway. So here, that is this body now. I can rename that and call that fluid. Because that's what it's going to be. So let's switch the geometry off and switch the mesh on. So this mesh doesn't look too bad, but it also is not quite what I want. So I want to, this mesh to be a bit finer. So let's get back to the mesh, back to the global mesh parameters and change this size here to half of that. So apply that. And that should now, when I go to the mesher again and restart the meshing, be careful when you use the Delaunay mesher. The Delaunay mesher typically starts from an existing surface mesh. And you can, you if you want to create the mesh from scratch, you have to select this whole geometry instead of existing mesh. Otherwise, it won't change the surface mesh. So if you want to, since we changed the overall mesh sizes, we want to create the surface mesh again. So that now gives us a new mesh, I hope. There we are. And that doesn't look too bad. So we can now switch the third step on in this meshing. So this looks like a reasonable mesh to start with. So the geometry seems to be all right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create prism layers. So I can either go here and create the prism layers in one go uh, in uh, separately, but let me start from scratch and create the whole mesh in one go. So I go back to all geometry and I click create prism layers here, and then that will create, hopefully create a prism layer on top of that. time to create the prisms. Uh, creating the prisms can be the most problematic part of creating a mesh. A tetrahedral mesh is easy to make, but extruding those prisms can be the tricky bit. So I'm having a look at that. Okay. We see we have five cells here. Only, I think I only set three in there. Let me just check. Three meshes. Do I have something defined here? 
That is reasonably weird. I need to find out where I did set those. I have done this before on this same project, so I may have some remainder. I should have done three of these. Um, but I'll see where that additional mesh uh, layer comes from. So that is now our first mesh. And I want to look into this mesh. I can use this view mesh cut plane, show, show cut plane. And I need to switch the volumes on to see the internal mesh. So here you see where that mesh comes from. And I can move that plane through. So now we are in the section at the top. So you see here, this is rather nice mesh. A bit further up. I'm scrolling through with a mouse wheel here. So the mesh looks, and now I'm reaching the exit, looks good so far. So I leave it here for this session. One thing I want to show you is how the scaling factor works before I close this. So now we have 145,832 cells, which is a rather small mesh. So if I go to the global mesh parameters and change this scaling factor, and um, I change it to 1.25. That means every edge is going to be 25% longer. Then this will now not be 0.5 millimeters, but it will be 0.5 times 1.25. So that means it will be 0.625 millimeters. So apply here. Switch this on, <coughs> compute the whole thing. Oh, sorry, I need to do, redo that now. Um, I need to start from all geometry. Compute, redo the whole thing. And it now should have variable number less cells. Now it only has 87,115 cells down here. So you see how the scaling factor works. And in the next video, I'm going to look at how can we refine this mesh locally and how can we drive the mesh quality even further. Thank you and see you soon.